I was talking about a time when I had been asked to teach the Our Father mm. at, a, at a church in upstate New York, and this was going back almost 40 years. And when I did, it created a great stir because really what people wanted me to do is help teenagers memorize the Our Father. <laughs> they called the wrong guy to do that. Because I said, that, you know, the, the Our Father is one of the most beautiful prayers. It, and it's not, you know, it's not the Lord's Prayer. That's a misnomer. No. You want know, to know, that's the church's prayer. Yeah. He said, when you pray, pray this way. You know what the Lord's Prayer is? Not my will, but thy will be done. That's, right. that's the Lord's Prayer. And that's what we need to get to. Yeah. But that prayer, beautiful as it is, you realize basically what it says in the middle of there is, you're asking God... The instruction of Jesus is ask God the Father and say to him, Father, don't forgive me any better than I forgive others. Yes. Forgive us our debts as we forgive others. The way, the way we forgive others, mm. we'd like you to forgive us. That's scary unless you are walking in the fullness of the grace of God, mm. which is what you should be doing. Mm. Okay? You have received so much. You have received the, the fullness of the mercy of God. That's what you now have to yeah. give. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, the more you give, the more he will pour into you. The more mercy you will receive, the deeper your understanding of mercy will be. When you begin to go out and be merciful to the unlovable, yes. mm -hmm. you will begin to understand what true mercy is. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus did. Yes. Had he not done that, we wouldn't be here tonight. Mm -hmm. We'd be out carousing and doing bad things and because it's only by the mercy and grace of God that we are here in His Word, right? It's kept us. But God gave it to us. You know, it says in 2 Corinthians, Paul wrote, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Mm -hmm. He is pouring His mercy into you. Mm -hmm. It's an ongoing thing. When Peter questioned Jesus about how many times he must forgive, as much as seven times, he said. Should I forgive somebody as much? And I can kind of see Peter saying this with some indignation. You know, what do you, you expect me to forgive seven times? And Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but 70 times seven. Matthew 18, 22. Now, by and large, I don't like to paraphrase scripture, but I'm going to paraphrase that. How many times should you forgive? One more time. Always one more time. Forgiveness should be bursting out of our heart because the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. When Jesus said that, you know, he went on to tell this parable. For the kingdom of heaven, for this reason the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he had begun to settle them, the one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. But since he did not have the means to repay, his Lord commanded him to be sold along with his wife and children and all that he had and repayment be made. Justice is justice, right? Yes. Yes. So that slave fell to the ground and prostrated himself before him, saying, Have patience with me, Lord, and I will repay you everything. And the Lord of that slave felt compassion and released him and forgave him the debt. But that slave went out and found one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And he seized him and began to choke him, saying, Pay back what you owe. So his fellow slave fell to the ground and began to plead with him, saying, Have patience with me and I will repay you. But he was unwilling. Mm -hmm and went and threw him in prison until he should pay back what was owed. So when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were deeply grieved and came and reported to their Lord all that had happened. Then summoning him, with his Lord said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not also have mercy on your fellow slave in the same way that I had mercy on you? And his Lord moved with anger. There's a righteous anger. Mm -hmm handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that was owed him. My heavenly Father will also do the same to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. I want to tell you that unforgiveness will cripple you. Yes. It will cripple you spiritually, and so many times I've seen it cripple people physically. Absolutely. It has incredible power. Release that. Do good. What was, what would you, what was Paul saying in Romans? You have somebody who's doing you harm, if your enemy's hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. Bless him. Forgive him. God will deal with him. Yes. It's God's job, not yours. Vengeance is mine. Say it the Lord. Absolutely. 
So, you know, my design, we, we were having this conversation as we were driving up to Dryden, I don't remember what brought it about, talking about success. Uh, I used to do a seminar, or I've done seminars on success in business, and one of the reasons I retitled that was because if you ask 100 people to define success, they'll have 115 different answers. And I'd say, for a Christian, there is only one definition of success. Only one. Only one. And that is, when you meet him face to face, his master will say to him, to you, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful with a few things, I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Matthew 25. If you don't hear those words, I don't care what you've accomplished on this earth, you failed. I don't care what you've accumulated on this earth, you failed. That is the measure of success, is that you have been pleasing to God. And you will be pleasing Him if in imitation of Him, you pour out mercy and love. Trust me, He will take care of the justice. Because he is just, and Absolutely. his judgments are Absolutely. just. Absolutely. We are now his ambassadors. We're ambassadors for Christ, that's what it says. Mm -hmm. We have a ministry of reconciliation. Yes. That's bringing people to the knowledge of the Lord that they might come to him. The purpose and manifest manifestation of God's mercy is that reconciliation. That's the purpose of it all. Yes. We, we, us, usins, not a church building, are the place the temple of the Holy Spirit, where the lost can meet God. That's why it says, But thanks be to God, who always leads us in the triumph of Christ, and manifests through us the sweet aroma of the knowledge of Jesus in every place. 2 Corinthians 2. You have an incredible power to bring the love, the forgiveness, the grace, the mercy of God into other people's lives.